Hello and welcome to the LMI webinar series. My name is Aaron Spooler and I have with me today, Matt Sauce. Uh, today we'll be going over the how to use the transform tool, kind of a welcome back, a back to school kind of special uh, hit in January hard. We're just going to be jumping into trans or transform tool and other measurement tools right in the go cater. So we're going over how to use transform tool and what it's good for. Uh, before we get into today's webinar, just a couple of housekeeping items. On the right hand side of your screen, you'll see there's a chat function. Please use that to ask any questions you have today. Uh, you probably notice that you're not able to um, uh, turn on your audio and speak with us directly. Uh, so if you have any questions during today, just put, put them in the chat or just say hi or uh, talk to us there. We have a Q&A period at the end and we will do our best to get to all of the questions at the end. Uh, the second part is that this is being recorded, so you'll be able to watch this again. Uh, this video will be uh, available to you for five days. Just check your email box. It will be there in a couple hours. So before we jump in, uh, Matt, I'd like to hand it over to you. Is there anything you'd like to uh, say to our audience today? Uh, no, uh, we can jump right in when uh, if we're ready. All right, Matt, I'll let you take it away then. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so let me move us up to the top right and get us out of the uh, out of the viewing area. There we go. As Aaron had mentioned, um, please submit your questions in the chat area and we'll try to answer them as we go, or at the very least, we'll answer them at the end where we'll have a Q&A session. So what we plan to do is uh, have an, a, an introduction to what it is we're going to be showing you today. Then we'll have a demonstration, a live demonstration via our emulator. And then from there, um, we'll have a review and then we'll open things up for q and I have our sensor here so I can do a live demonstration if we want to see something outside of the scope that we're uh, presenting today. So what we're going to do today, of course, we're focused on the transform tool, but the transform tool is really good for, uh, as I'll read right here, we will demonstrate how to repeatedly measure the flatness of a small section of a target. I have the target right here and we're going to be looking at this section right here and I'll show that in the next slide. Uh, regardless of how it's positioned in the X, Y, or Z axis. So rotation around uh, R sub Z, shift up and down, left or right, in X and Y, in or out, uh, in Z. So uh, we're going to be using our G3210 snapshot, which uses a blue structured light and dual imagers uh, to give you that instant 3D point cloud. You could do this with line profilers and motion in the Y axis to create that 3D point cloud. Uh, we just decided to go with this sensor for, uh, for this particular demonstration. And again, we'll be using this target that I have in my hand. Um, this is our second version, it has a lot of uh, cool features in it that you can uh, play around with some of our tools and try to find yourself. And we'll be focusing on the four squares that you see highlighted in blue <clears throat> there. Uh, so quick question by Lance, are there any demo files for us to follow along with in the emulator? Um, you could use, it's not this exact one. Uh, you can use, if you have the emulator open, you could use uh, the 2330 surface uh, target file. I believe that's our previous target, not this target that I have here, but you could play around with some of those tools on that particular target. Okay. And uh, just to back back onto that, so what you're seeing today, we're using a GS file, a pre-recorded file of uh, what Matt has up on the screen here. Uh, I can share the file that we're using today. Unfortunately, it is a little too big to send over email. Uh, maybe if people can let me know what's the best way to share that or we can put it up on the server. Uh, we'll figure it out just so that you can follow along. Great. Thanks, Aaron. So here's a list of the tools that we're going to go through on the emulator. Um, there, there's a multitude of ways that we could get to where we're trying to get to today. This is just what we selected um, to try and demonstrate the, the properties that we felt would best uh, suit this demonstration. So first, we're going to start off with a bounding box. Basically, we're going to take all the data points uh, of the part, and you'll see that here shortly, and encompass them in a box that can give us length, width, uh, height, but it really takes in consideration. Um, it can't see what's below. So the height can be a little skewed, but 
it'll definitely give you a good length and width measurement on here as well as the center point for the part. Um, the next tool that we'll use is a surface edge tool and, and we're going to go into this in great detail later on, but it will track the rotation in R sub Z for us. We'll push that into our transformation tool, which will take any of this out of play and center it up for us every time. Um, and then we're going to talk about using our surface mass tool because this will be a rather large 3D point cloud. We're going to focus on the part that we're interested in and remove all the stuff that we're not. And I'll show you how that works. Then we'll apply a plane tool and push that into another transform tool. And all the data points that are in that region will snap this part in rotation around R sub X and R sub Y um, so that we're using a uh, very localized flat surface to measure the flatness of our four pads. And finally, the surface flatness tool, which we will have four regions. You could have multitudes of regions, um, but for this, we're going to put a region over each one of these little squares. Let's see, where's my finger? Right there. We're, I don't know if it's going to focus, but anyways, you'll see it soon. Uh, and we'll be looking for uh, the flatness tool gives you the min Z, uh, max Z minus min Z difference. And if this were to get nicked or if one plane uh, didn't build up like it should in the, in the manufacturing process or something of that nature, this tool would show that to us. Any new questions? No. All right. So one thing that I did want to point out is that uh, the surface transform tool can be a rather large tool, meaning it can take a good amount of processing time. So if you're trying to um, process multiple images uh, very quickly, I've had customers that are trying to, you know, scan an image, um, apply tools and get measurement values or pass fail results in under a second. Um, if you're trying to do two or three parts per second, this tool may be something that you want. You definitely are going to pay attention to. As you can see here, the first one that I have highlighted is the full 3D point cloud. And it took an average of around um, 130 milliseconds. Whereas when we reduce it via the mass tool, just to look at the area of interest, um, we could transform it in about one millisecond. So it really depends on how large your point cloud is that you're trying to rotate and things of that nature, but it can be quite a heavy tool. All right, so from there, um, I could just take whatever the sensor sees and apply some manual adjustments as you see on the right hand side. However, it does work best if I use some previous tools and features from those tools to push into this tool so that it always gives me what I want. So again, we're going to use this surface bounding box. We're going to take all the data that I see and, and look at the rotation and its center point. And then we will take the surface edge tool and align the part so that it'll center it up wherever I'm at with the surface bounding box, but the surface edge tool will make sure that our rotation around R sub Z is correct. So the main part about the transform tool in, in my eyes, maybe somebody has a slightly different opinion is that um, our sensors will see a part and you can center it every time It'll always center, but it doesn't give you corrections for R sub Z r sub x r sub y so um, you really don't get the six degrees of freedom that you do from using the surface uh, transform tool and with that said i'm going to pass it over to aaron excellent thank you that's a great overview of what the um what the tool does so we are going to jump straight into a live demonstration i'm going to share my screen here move myself let's go over there so i'll be top left i think that's probably the probably the best place to go no we'll go there perfect okay uh so when you start up your go or either your live sensor or your emulator this is what you'll be looking at what i'm going to do is uh, actually what i've already done is open up a new data viewer so if i click on here that opens up a second window here. So what I'm, uh, the reason why I'm going to be doing this 
is to show you the before and after. So <clears throat> as we go through the different uh, different scans, you'll be able to see this. Uh, if you see where my cursor is, you can follow along, do the same thing. Uh, I just went ahead and did this already, so you didn't have to watch me resize my window. We have the exact same target that Matt just had in his hand. It's the Gokator training target. It's a little 3D, uh, 3D printed object uh, that is used for training. It has a couple of different uh, simulations for gap and flush. Today, we're going to be focusing in on the consumer electronics panel. So that's, uh, as Matt was saying, uh, we'll be doing some quality assurance uh, example, making sure that all of these are being processed or being made um, defect free. So you can see at the top where my cursor is, we have five different scans. And just like real life, as these different objects are coming down underneath your sensor, they're not going to be in the same position. And that's what we're working on today. So first thing that we're adding, uh, going down the exact same list that Matt introduced us to, so we have those different order of tools. We'll be starting with the surface bounding box. Uh, so the surface bounding box encapsulates all the data points of the acquired scan. I'm going to do a couple of things here. First, I'm going to turn our example to grayscale. Uh, I'm just going to gray this out so that you're able to see where the tool lines are and more importantly, the center point here. Uh, with a height map, it's a little more difficult to see. So that's all I'm doing there. Uh, with the bounding box, you can see it, uh, it snaps the bounding box around the data points. And so our transform tool is going to use the X, Y, and Z coordinates for this. First thing I'm going to do, if you see where my cursor is over on the right-hand side under the surface bounding box, advanced, I'm going to turn on rotation. You can see once I turn on rotation, that now snaps the bounding box a little bit closer to the object. Now it's going to rotate it with it. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the use percentile filter. So you can see that the bounding box right now captures every single point. Now, we're not too interested in capturing the highs and lows, so I'm going to filter out some of that percentile. So you can see I'm just going to turn that on and off real quick again. You can see how the bounding box shrinks to essentially what I want to be the core of the object. All right, second tool will be the surface edge tool. We're moving along. So the surface edge tool, this you can see where the region of interest box is. We put it on the left-hand side. We're capturing an edge. So again, we're setting this up for a transform tool. We've got a center point from the bounding box, and this is going to give us an edge line for the, bound, for the transform tool. And so the transform tool will now be able to manipulate those two things, the center point and the edge. With the edge tool, you can see that the data points it's collecting are all in blue. Just move the region of interest box. I don't think that will wreck things too, too much. Uh, the data points being collected are in blue. It is collecting data points in the direction of the arrow and it's going to get the first ones. Now, we have a few extra data points here that we don't want. So I can eliminate these by using outlier fraction. If you take a look where my cursor is, I'm going to turn outlier fraction to 25%. You can see a few of those data points turn red. That means it's now being ignored because we don't want that edge line to go across that angle. So I'm going to scan through my different objects there. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I've got that edge. Most of the, the data points there are in blue. And I'm just going to check what that looks like. I'm going to click on features. I'm going to click on edge line. I'm going to zoom out. And I can see that's my edge line right there. That's being drawn across there. And that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, and I'm going to go now to the surface transform. So with the transform, this is all that's showing is our different axes there. I'm going to put in those two different uh, those two different measurements that I just set up, the bounding box and the edge. So under input line, I'm going to choose edge, and that's just going to find the center point of the edge right there. And I'm going to input the point, which is the bounding box, that'll bring it in there. And then so, I, to be able to see how that's being transformed, if you take a look at my cursor, I'm going to click on data, click on the transform surface. I'm just going to go to 2D view, and that's what it looks like. So that is the beginning of making that, so as making that stand still. So as I go through my different scans, you can see now it's going to be 
it's starting to stay still, which is very nice. However, us being very precise in the vision industry, I, as a personal preference, I just don't like it being horizontal where my original scan is vertical. So I'm going to manipulate it a little bit in using fixed transform. So if you enable add a fixed fit transform, uh, I'm going to first adjust the angle. I'm going to go 270 degrees. That puts it vertical. I'm happy with that. However, it is off center. Again, I don't like things being off center. I want it to be perfect. Uh, I'm going to change the Y offset to a minus 30. That's right in the middle. I'm going to go through my different scans. And I'm pretty happy with that. Things are centered, things stay still, and they are pretty much in alignment with how it was originally scanned. All right. So at this point, I will take a quick pause and hand it over to Matt and see if we have any questions. Don't see any questions oh, okay. from Matt. I will hand it off to you, sir. Great. Well, let me share my screen. Bear with me just a second. All right. So as uh, I've got a, a, an extra panel here for you, we've got one in 3D that's turned to the right and uh, also our bounding box down below in, in uh, the grayscale. And uh, I'm going to take over from here. One thing I did want to jump in here and show you real quickly is if we were to use one of these individually, I want to look at the data here. Let me zero these out for you real quick. And so uh, as I scroll through these, you can see that just using the edge line, it takes the center point of our edge line and uses that as our zero zero reference for X and Y. So the part's still moving around and, and really wouldn't be stationary enough for my, uh, my future tools. And so, um, before I add the bounding box, one thing I do want to show you is if I go to 90 degrees, it rotates counterclockwise. So there's a 90 degree rotation. Here's a 180 degree rotation. And then finally, 270 brings it the way that I want it, where my inspection panel is going to be down here in the bottom right. And again, this part measures about, uh, we can actually use the length and width from our bounding box. So the width is 59.9. I'm going to use half of that and move this part over by 30 millimeters so that it's nice and centered up for us. Um, so, but now you can see that it's not uh, centered in the Y direction. And for that, I will add our bounding box. And now you can see that we are centered up X and Y um, with our R sub Z rotation locked in. So moving on to our, you could move on from here and go straight to your tools, but I wanted to fine tune things even, we wanted to fine tune things just uh, uh, even a little bit more. So we're gonna move to a mask tool and how this tool works is, I'm gonna focus in on this region here. So we created this region of interest and I'm basically going to remove everything that I'm not wanting to inspect. And this is what remains. So from here, I will stream this point cloud. So if I come in like this and we go to 3D, you can really start to see those data points coming through. And the one thing that I do want to bring to your attention, and the reason I did this is if we look at our dashboard and we look at the performance of each one of our tools, the, the larger 3D object you can see was taking anywhere from uh, 90 milliseconds up to almost an entire second to, to transform and move around. Where now that I have masked off the surface, um, I'm typically running about zero to or um, in microseconds to about six or seven milliseconds max. So I can move this smaller point cloud around much quicker uh, for in future transformations. So let's go back to our um, mask tool and I'm going to push 
this 3D point cloud into our next um, into our next transform tool. But before we do that, let me go back to 2D and we'll zoom in. And we didn't really give this part. We laid it flat for all five of the measurements that you see or all five of the um, images that you see. But if there were some rotation around uh, R sub X or R sub Y, this would help to alleviate that by taking all the data that is within this region of interest and snapping the entire 3D point cloud to that plane. So real quickly, let me go into 3D and show you what this plane looks like. You can see that it is right in line with everything we've got going on. However, if I were to move this over so that it is picking up data from this stud, you can see that that plane moves around. We can shift that plane around all day and um, kind of pick up different angles or whatnot. This may be a better representation of what I'm trying to explain. There we go. So now we're not in playing with our part. So we'll put this in our area of interest. And if we were to have rotation around uh, R sub X or R sub Y, then this would uh, remove that um, nonlinearity. So I'll push this plane tool into our next transform tool and we'll look at the data here. And so um, let me zero this out for you real quick. If I look at the data, that was where my plane tool was. And now that is zero, zero reference. The actual height was about what, 12. And in our original image, it was about 25 millimeters. So by using the plane, not only do I get R sub X and R sub Y uh, leveled out, but I also zero out my, my part in, in Z, in our Z axis. So um, here you can see the transformed image will be uh, zero. I added five millimeters of offset just to get it out uh, above that grid. So it's easier for representation. And then finally, we're going to stream this final 3D point cloud into our final tool for our final inspection. And the point of this is to look at these four um, squares to make sure that they are perfectly flat or as close to flat as our spec uh, allows for. I set the max, we set the max min on um, the global flatness to a maximum of 150 uh, micron or micrometers. And so we're going to look at the, the um, maximum Z minus the minimum Z for each one of these squares and then give you a global flatness. So you can see each one of uh, these squares is hot is being measured independently and then brought into our global flatness measurement. And so as I scroll through here, green, the green number for our global flatness is showing that it passes our 150 micron um, maximum and there's image two and image three is passing at 138 micron and image four we have a defect right here so you can see that the height map is showing that there is a a, 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 a section that is lower than the rest and we purposely damaged this one little grid for this demonstration we're sitting at 387 micron which is above our threshold and image five is another good one. It goes back to 125. So if we were pushing this uh, tool out to our PLC or whatever um, for recording purposes or, or for future or post processing, uh, we would see that the fourth part that came down the line had a defect. And with that said, I'm going to pass it back over to uh, my colleague, Aaron. That was great. That was a fantastic explanation. Thank you. All right. So let's go back. I don't see any questions coming up yet. So we are going to jump into our review to show exactly what we just did. Uh, this will give you a couple uh, uh, pointers. We just want to lay it all out there. Again, uh, we more than happy to share this file that we're uh, doing this exercise with. 
Uh, you can also pick up these Go Cater training targets from us if you want to follow along, if you're doing any training. Uh, and then you can just uh, follow along with this webinar or kind of uh, self-educate if you want. So a quick review of what we just did. So we did, first we added the bounding box that encapsulates all the data points the sensor sees, snaps a bounding box around all those data points, and we are using the X, Y, and Z coordinates from this for the future transform tool. Uh, the, the transform tool can also use the Z axis rotation. Next, we added the surface edge. It finds a line feature from part of the transform tool and to snap to these coordinates every time. This provides the X, Y, Z, and Z angle axes for transform tool as well. Uh, and then also we set the outlier fraction. That's where we put that to 25% to ignore some of those outlying data points and it turned those red. And finally, we did the surface transform. Well, the first step of the first surface transform to just kind of start to get it to stay still. Uh, and this is the kind of halfway there point where Matt took over. The uh, bounding box centers the part on the X, Y, Z axis. The edge tool rotates the part around the Z axis, and we did an additional fixed transform to orient the part visually minus 30 millimeters on the Y offset and 270 degrees on the Z angle. And that's really more to make it visually appealing, to make it look the way we want it to. And most importantly, all future parts being scanned will be oriented this way. So this is where it really pays off. You set all these measurements, you put all this time in uh, playing around with measurement tools, now, every object that you scan after this will be put this way, and uh, it'll be oriented, it'll stay still, and this is where the payoff comes. All right, uh, I'll hand it off to Matt to take us through the, the rest of the tools. All right. Uh, we had a quick question that popped up about uh, why do we choose 25%? Uh, it's a good starting off point. Let's, uh, let's jump back there. Um, depending on the target, you can use, I, I've used upwards of 60% uh, to remove a lot of the outliers and try to track that particular edge. It really depends on the target that you're using um, versus uh, we started off with 25. We more than likely would have got away with 10. This was a, a safe number to use. Um, if we were trying to use the edge line center position, I probably would have used a much lower number um, and played around with it a lot more to, to really make sure that I only needed that maybe 5% or 10% or whatever um, to get the line that I need in, in every instance. Um, but we were going to use a bounding box to center our part. So this was um, an easy way to, to move forward. I hope that answers your question. Great question. I appreciate it and keep the questions coming. Um, so, Again, as a uh, refresher, we use the surface mass tool to remove a lot of the excess data that we weren't trying to inspect. And the smaller the point cloud, the faster the tools will work. Even not only the transform tool, but subsequent tools that may use a large region or not even use a region, but inspect the entire part by um, masking the part so that you're only focused on a small area on your part, your subsequent tools will move a lot faster. And again, um, I use the surface plane to snap what was remaining of my 3D point cloud to this uh, R sub X, R sub Y plane that I'm creating from this region of interest and zero out this part um, in our Z axis. And I push those, I push that tool in those tools into our surface transform tool. So I'm streaming the mass 3D point cloud uh, I push the plane tool and, and here you can see that we actually have some rotation around uh, R sub Y. You can see the left side is a little bit higher than the right side. And by applying that plane tool across this area, it snaps this point cloud back to where we were seeing it before. And then we take this final point cloud and we stream it into our flatness tool. And now you can see that we're using that flatness tool to look at the min and max uh, data points within the regions of interest and um, the scratch surface obviously didn't pass our um, criteria. So this is the image four that I was showing you before and image uh, one, two, three, and five passed. So 
I hope that that is a, a good review. Any any further questions? Um, questions and answer questions. I'll try to answer them. We also have a live setup here if you want to see something in particular. Yeah, we'll just give it a minute, see if there's any other questions that uh, they are rolling in. Uh, Tarek, that was a great question. And while we pause here, I do highly recommend if uh, you do want to try this at home, go to lmi3d.com. That's our website. Uh, you can download the emulator. We are using version 6.0 and uh, we highly encourage you go download the emulators free. You can get hands on, try out some of these tools. Um, yeah, we just, uh, you don't need to be a programmer to use them. You can pick them up, just follow along. You can see exactly what we did here. Um, a quick question. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I have a copy of the presentation. So with this presentation, uh, we you'll be able to see the webinar. Um, it will be up on YouTube. So you'll be able to see it right away. Uh, we'll also put it up on YouTube in probably a week's time uh, when, if you are interested in having a copy of both the GS file and the uh, kind of the step by step, please reach out to me. That is training at lmi3d.com. Uh, I'll just put that in the chat there as well. Well, while he's typing, I wanted to say thank you for your time today. If you have uh, additional questions outside of wanting this video and the support file that you can open in the emulator to play around with the tool sets that we that we demonstrated today, um, please reach out to uh, tech support at LMI3D.com and somebody, maybe even myself, will reach out to you and uh, help you with your application. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Hope you have a wonderful day. Matt, thank you, thank guys. You so Thanks much. for your time.